glad that we all collectively agreed to call this stage. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Totally Awesome Bar? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Totally awesome. Yeah, what's up? What is up? Totally awesome bar. What is up? What's up? What's up? What's up? I haven't prepared much. <laughs> I haven't prepared much. I'm gonna keep asking what's up till uh, something something cracks up here. I don't know. What's up? What's up? No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, what's up? I'm. <laughs> I, uh, I strictly buy weed from women. Yeah, strictly buy weed from women. I'm an ally. I'm an ally. It's fucked up. Women make 82 cents to every dollar a man makes. But the weed is way cheaper. I will say that. Yeah. I will say that. In my endeavors, I've met a lot of white girls with dreads. And I got three fun facts for you to take home. Yeah, white girls with dreads. First off, always, obviously, gonna ask if you wanna smoke some weed. Second, white girls with dreads, either in a lesbian phase, or just left one. And uh, this third one's been proven to be true 100% of the time. White girls with dreads always have a UTI. Hey <laughs> yeah, little secret menu uh, downtown Savannah, just ask for the white girls with dreads special, they'll give you a tall glass of cranberry juice. Sweet, pretty sweet. You didn't know that. Cracking the code for y'all, man. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm Puerto Rican. I'll answer that question for you. Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican, but I grew up here in Savannah, which means I grew up Mexican. Yeah, who's with me? It's, uh, I'm not offended by that anymore. I get called Mexican a lot. But one time at a bar, I had a drunk white lady say, Shut the fuck up, Menudo. And uh, if you're not laughing at that, if you didn't respond to that, it's because you don't know who Menudo is. It was a Puerto Rican boy band from the 80s, famously fronted by Ricky Martin, made up of five Puerto Rican dudes who look just like me. <laughs> yeah, my friends were pissed. They were like, how could she do that? I had to take them aside and be like, guys, you don't understand. There are 23 distinct Spanish-speaking countries. That means she had a 4% chance to get that right. She fucking nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I think she's an ally. I don't know. I don't know. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, family is, uh, Puerto Rico. My dad grew up there. He has a lot of brothers, a lot of machismo. Uh, we go back to Puerto Rico. I meet his friends, and uh, they look at me and they're like, "You seem like a cool guy. You seem like you get chicks." And then uh, they tell me a story uh, about them being a cool guy back in the '80s. And I go, "Doesn't sound like you were a cool guy, dude. It sounds like you were a rapist. I would not share that story with anybody else. That was not cool. Not cool." <laughs> Yeah, my phone knows I'm Hispanic. Yeah, it knows. Um, I get a lot of ads in Spanish. My phone thinks I'm gay. I get a lot of HIV medicine ads in Spanish. I recently had to Google what PrEP was. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but I get it. I, I know why it knows I'm Hispanic, but I get why it thinks I'm gay. It's because uh, every year, for one day out of the year, I go gay for the day. Yeah, 24 hours a game. It's a little more than 1,400 minutes out of the uh, 525,600 minutes. If you got that joke, you're probably thinking, this guy might actually go game for the day. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a day full of musicals, vodka sodas, and sucking dicks. Yeah, it's a blast. <laughs> Uh, I have to go game for the day, though. I have to. Because the other 364 days, I, uh, I violently persecute gay people. So, I gotta make up for my sins. It's a little bit like the purge. <laughs> uh, my dad hates that joke. My dad hates that joke so much. Uh, mostly because he raised me uh, homophobic. Yeah, anyone here grew up Catholic? Similar, similar, yeah. My dad raised me homophobic. But, um... Instead of Hail Marys and, uh, and Our Fathers, we just made a bunch of gay jokes and uh, said the word maggot a lot. Wait, oh shit, I got terrible handwriting. <laughs> yeah, my dad uh, sat me down when I was 10 years old. He goes, son, in this house, we're terrified of gay bottoms. Because any man that can take a dick in the ass and ask for more is way manlier than we ever will be. Yeah, we gotta respect that in this house. This is a house of respect. 
Not equality. <laughs> Whistle, can you tell? <laughs> it's really embarrassing. My dad also hates that. I got dad props. <laughs> I was uh, I was watching Jeopardy with my little sister. I have a nine-year-old sister. We sat and watched Jeopardy. Uh, and a category came up. It was new stars with the letter N in quotation marks. Any Jeopardy watchers in here? Yeah. All right, so maybe you guys can answer these questions. All right, the first clue uh, was uh, this St. Louis native debut album, Country Grammar, debuted at number three on the billboards. Is it hot in here? Nelly, yes, yes, got it right, Nelly. The second clue was, uh, although one foot shorter than some of the other competitors, this man towered over the competition to win his first NBA dunk contest in 2006. Anybody? Nate Robinson, yes, yes. Uh, right after that clue, my dad, uh, my little sister looks at me and goes, "What question? Are all the answers going to be N words?" <laughs> I had to look at her like, "So far, yeah, so far." <laughs> Since we're on the topic of race, let's, let's talk about this Asian hate that's been going around. Yeah, a lot of Asian hate over the past couple of years. But if you know anything about this country, you know that Asian hate isn't new. No, not new at all. Uh, 1882, we passed the Chinese Exclusion Act, banning Chinese immigrants from coming into this country. We being white people, by the way, not me. Uh, uh, 1941, we started interning Japanese Americans after the bombing on Pearl Harbor. In 2007, right here in Savannah, Georgia, Vietnamese kid crossed me up. Hit a three in my face. Asian hate in this country isn't new, no. No, it's not new at all. It's been around since at least 2007. In my research, at least. I don't know if you guys have independently researched that yet. <laughs> I went to public school, obviously, because where else do Asian kids get really good at basketball? <laughs> uh, oh, what? You talking to me? What's up? You got... Huh? Repeat my question? Yeah. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> uh, if you ever been, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, if you ever been to public school, you know that uh, lunchrooms are divided by race. There's a white side and there's a black side. Me as a brown man, I had to kind of find a way to navigate both worlds. Now at 26 years old, I'm a super well-rounded person. I do some white activities, I play golf, uh, I drink IPAs, uh, I'll go through your fridge unannounced. You know, but I also do black activities. I play spades the right way, jumping, jumping, deuce, deuce. Yeah, I go to barber shops, and uh, I'm super impressed by magic tricks. Yeah, you do magic crap, like, oh shit! No, growing up though, it was funny, I had to explain, like, when my friends would come over, my black friends would come over, and uh, I had to explain that we don't have any wash racks, you know? Then my white friends would come over, and I had to explain, like, vegetables, spices, like, what are you guys talking about? You guys like that, right? You guys like that. <laughs> um, I have a lot of single friends. Woo! <laughs> A lot of single friends, uh, they're problematic though. They send messages to the group about like their hookups and stuff. And they'd be like, last night this girl asked if I had protection. I looked at her and I said, I thought that's what those crystals were for. <laughs> Moon said we're going raw tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> problematic. <laughs> uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I have a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend. So I'm not in those escapades. Uh, my girlfriend uses Siri to text, which is pretty funny. She'll uh, she'll be sending a message and be like, uh, "What time is it?" question mark or uh, "Okay!" exclamation point. Uh, but it's trickling to the way she talks to me, like daily, like not via text. Like last night, she said, "No, we're not having sex tonight." Period. Last week, she almost got hit by a car. She uh, ran across the street, I yelled out, Baby, wait, no! 
But right as the car missed her, I thought, that would have been a clean break. Yeah. Would have been a clean break. The messy part wasn't going to be the breakup. Yeah. It was going to be the cleanup. Yeah, he got it. He got it. Next girlfriend doesn't have to hear about my ex girlfriend. We're all too sad to talk about it. Yeah. If you didn't laugh at that, don't worry. My girlfriend always laughs at that joke. I wrote it uh, right after I watched her almost get hit by a car. Once I got across the street safely, I uh, looked at her, I told her a joke, I said, what do you think about this? She goes, I can't believe you wrote a joke about me getting hit by a car. And I said, baby, it seems like you don't listen to me, because that joke's about us breaking up. Uh, thank you guys so much. My name is Hector.